Good evening, this is Bill Ramos. Welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how to do the upside down fire. Most fires have the tinder in the bottom, medium sized logs, and then larger sized logs on the top. And that can cause some problems like it can be smoky or the larger logs can um, uh, snuff out the fire underneath. The upside down fire just turns it all the way upside down. The larger logs are in the bottom, medium sized logs, and then you put the tinder at the top. And what happens is uh, the fire goes from the top down. Uh, it allows your flue to get heated by the fire. Uh, it's more efficient because any smoke that comes out from the logs gets burned by the fire on top. And then all the embers start to trickle down from the top to the bottom layer, the middle, the middle layer, then the bottom layer and uh, you get a roaring fire towards the end. Uh, there's also no tending involved, and it's a cleaner burn. So let me show you how it's done. First, I'm gonna create the, the bottom layer. Um, and I'll use uh, the largest logs that I have here. Just like that. This will be the, the bottom layer with the largest logs. Then I'm gonna get medium-sized logs like these and set up a log set up another layer just like that. You want these, you know, as opposed to what you might do for a log cabin fire, you want them to be brushed up right against each other so there's almost no space. That allows one layer to burn at a time. Now these logs are going to serve as the top layer. Just like that. And then I'm going to use some newspaper and small branches of tinder here at the top. I'm going to create a little teepee fire here with the small branches that I have. And you always want to make sure that your flue is open. So here's the setup at the beginning and uh, I'm going to grab a match right now. And I'm going to light it and see what happens. So now this is great. The newspaper starts out, starts up the fire really quickly, and that heats up your flue. You want the hot flues because you want it to be able to draft air and make sure all the smoke leaves your home. Okay, it's been 10 minutes, and uh, you'll you see that the small fire from the kindling has now uh, moved over to that first layer of logs below it. Um, it's only been 10 minutes. Uh, I put this screen here. Other than that. Uh, I might have moved the twigs at the top, but this has just been one match and it was 10 minutes ago. Okay, it's 25 minutes since I lit the first match and what we'll see is that the top three logs are now in flames and the fire is starting to reach to the second layer of the upside down fire. You'll notice that there's, there, there is some smoke coming out from the logs, but it's getting burned by the fire. And that, that's a cleaner burn. There's less creosote that goes up to the top of your uh, chimney. And uh, when you do the chimney cleaning, um, it's, uh, they're going to be able to uh, get less creosote and uh, it's less risk of a fire hazard up your chimney. So it's been 45 minutes and the, the fire is roaring right now. The bottom layer has caught fire. It's not engulfed in flames, but it's starting to light up from the top. And the top two layers are, are burning right now. You can see it's a pretty clean fire. It's starting to heat the masonry around it. And uh, that makes the room pretty comfortable. And uh, it, it's... Uh, it doesn't require much tending at all. I haven't had to use any of the tools. I haven't had to add any firewood. So this kind of fire is really great for a party. You might start lining it from the top and let it build up its flames. And while you're doing that, you can pour your guests some drinks or prepare some hors d'oeuvres. Um, and then by the time you come back to the living room, you sit down, the, the fire is getting started. Now, if you want the fire to get started, Quicker. You can use a modified upside on fire, which might have 
uh, like two layers of firewood. You'll have, you'll have the three base um, logs at the bottom, and then you might create a, a small log cabin fire uh, above it. That'll start quicker, and you don't have that, that lag time at the beginning. Okay, it's, about a, it's been about an hour, and what you see here is that the, the top layer has started to break down into the fire. Just like a fire, uh, just like a log cabin fire, it's important that you build the upside down fire so that it falls onto itself and that the logs don't come out rolling here. Um, if you ever need to add additional logs, uh, you can wait until this fire sort of um, dies down a bit and you'll still have like these huge embers at the bottom. It'll be the largest logs at the bottom. And you can add one or two logs uh, um, just parallel at the top of it and that keeps the fire going. But uh, you know, at this point, it's, it's pretty warm in here. I took my sweater off. Hi, it's been an hour and a half, and uh, we've gotten through the bottom layer now. Um, the coals are red hot. You'll see that the, the first and second layers have fallen onto the third layer. And, uh, you know, the fire, it's, it's not as big a fire, but you can see that everything is red hot, and the coals, which have landed at the very bottom, are just, are, are super large, super red. And uh, that's the great thing about the upside down fire. I hope you'll be open-minded and try it at home. It's, uh, it's a great uh, way of building a fire because uh, it starts from the top down, it heats your flue, and um, it's just more efficient uh, burn. A lot of the embers, rather than falling onto the ground and getting cool, they fall onto the next layer below them. So I feel that m more of the wood uh, gets used up by the, the fire. And, um, there's hardly any tending at all needed. Okay, so this fire's been going on for two hours, and I'm gonna let it die. Uh, there's no more flames, or, or just a few small flames, and you can see just the red hot coals have fallen through the bottom of the grate. There's one log that should eventually burn through um, in the next hour, half hour or so, but um, this is what the upside down fire looks like after two hours. Um, I've got a... Uh, a meat thermometer here right now. It shows that it's uh, 76.6 degrees Fahrenheit in the room. Uh, outside it's 36 degrees Fahrenheit and we actually set uh, our thermostats uh, for our heating at uh, 70 tonight. So it's, it's a pretty efficient fire. I, I hope you can try it at home. Thanks for watching this video. Please click like, comment, or subscribe. Thanks. Thank you.